Good evening, my friends, and welcome to the next episode of Mist 4 Revelation. We are streaming uh, a day and a half later than we usually would because of family commitments can be busy on Sunday morning this week. But it's Monday evening, and we're using our Monday streaming slot to stream uh, an episode of Mist 4. Uh, that also means it's going to be a slightly longer stream as well, because this stream is usually a two and a half hour stream, so we will probably get plenty of puzzle solving done today. In the chat, we have Spiper, good evening to you, and we have Justy303, good evening to you, and Justy has resubscribed for another month, a 10 month subscription, and 10 months, it really does fly, doesn't it? In June, I'm going to be celebrating, I think, my one year anniversary of uploading videos every day to YouTube, which is something that I did not think I would be able to... Like, on the face of it, it seems like it's not something that should be terribly hard, right? Like, play seven hours of video games a week and record them, but, like, your schedule... Like, when you're a new parent, your schedule is really all over the place. And so um, I'm, I'm quite pleased to have been able to stick with it for, for almost a year. But yeah, I mean, February was the one year anniversary of the YouTube channel at all and the very first videos. And you know what? I got a, I got a comment today on my Tunic video, my oldest video up there, basically asking where the rest of my Tunic playthrough was, which is a real shame because Tunic, of course, was the game that actually inspired me to start recording my video game content again, so I, uh, I, I don't have the first part of that playthrough. Right, what is the plan today? The plan is, we have one more totem to go and look at, right? So, recap from last time. We have got one more totem to go and look at. Basically, to get into the fortress, which is down here, we need uh, a five-digit code. The five-digit code is on the totems. So we've got this one, we've got this one, we've got this one, and we have this one, right? Now we could surmise that the fifth digit is probably the, uh, the other symbol that we've not used, but we're not going to assume that, okay? Um, the fifth totem is literally there and the monkeys are covering it. Now which order do each of the symbols go in? Well, we have this handy chart, which looks a lot like a uh, Kaplinsky's triangle, um, but it's got sort of paw prints from five different animals, and we've got this page here, which should sort of line our animals up a little bit. Um, the five-clawed animal, I think, is going to be pretty easy. Working out which animal is each of these two, the, the cloven hoof animal is going to be a little bit hard. Pretty sure the four-fingered monkeys, I'm pretty sure there's going to be the monkeys because they have the opposable thumb. And then we've got something which looks a bit like a chicken. But we have these which help us out somehow, right? They seem to be pairing up the items with other things. But this is clearly not a fish. Do you know what I mean? So, not quite sure. There's also the fact that the totems probably go with the animals that are near the totems. So, i.e., this one that was in the grassland, because that's where the tigers live, probably corresponds to the top of the triangle, tiger claw. But we don't know that for sure. And actually, I'm also having to think about whether are all of the animals on each of the totems the same animal? Because if you look at this one, this has got like a little beak and it's got little fingers which are like this. But this one next to it also has a beak, but he's got sort of fingers more like this. Which makes me wonder whether we should have actually been taking pictures of the whole totem rather than just the thing. But we know where the totems are, so we can go back and do that. Now, the immediate pressing issue on this part of the code in here, right? Because I don't want to labour the point too much. We have a puzzle here, which is related to these monkeys just sort of being in the way of what we want to find. 
And you know what? Clearly, that's a monkey on the totem, isn't it? Yeah? Holding the thing like that. So actually, the totems themselves probably depict different animals. And we should probably go back and get uh, pictures of all of them. This one is clearly a monkey. Now, we've got... We've got three pipes. Doing them fast doesn't do anything. And doing them backwards and forwards doesn't make any difference either. But as I was saying, if the solution to this one is not forthcoming, if we know that that's the monkey totem, we'll be able to jimmy the last part of the code. Yeah, because it's a five-digit code, and if we know four of the digits, then we could probably just work out the last one. If the solution to the puzzle is not obvious. So, let's have a look at what we've got here, though. Because I'm not sure there's anything else... ...to this puzzle. Because where we are in the map... Yeah, we're sort of down here. And we're looking this way. So I don't think there's any looking at this from another angle or anything like that. Yeah, that was me, uh... Hello. No, that's just to take a picture. Now we tried each of these... Did, have they stopped? Well, they appear to have stopped moving now. One of them sort of looked at me for a moment. Did you see that? No, now they're jumping again. Oh, yeah, he's definitely looking at me, isn't he? Yeah, he's he looked this way when we did it. Or do they just look this way occasionally anyway? That's the, that's the hard bit to work out with a puzzle like this, isn't it? Because the timings are all just a bit... No, yeah, no, he, he just looked at me anyway, didn't he? Now, we can't... We can't do anything with the uh, organ pipes whilst those whilst we're zoomed in on that yeah now this one at the bottom him running off isn't anything because they occasionally run off anyway I feel like this must be a code that we've missed somewhere Possibly. He's managed to get a lot of monkeys, hasn't he? Okay, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go and take pictures of the other totems. 
to try and get a handle on which animals each totem is representing. Okay. Hang on, wait. Was that the pipes in the background there? I don't know. I'm not sure we're supposed to be listening for cues. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there is sort of pipe work there, isn't there? But it's sort of a lot of different tones. It's not just those three tones. Nauseam in the chat. Hype, hype. Great to see you. Happy Monday. We are going to have a little uh, wander about taking pictures of various totems right now. You still remember your time here. Ah, uh, yeah. I think it's 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 an interesting one, isn't it? Because these uh, these games do prompt a certain amount of uh, fondness in retrospect for some of the environments, don't they? You were the most drunk per. <laughs> I was the most drunk a person ever was in this age. Lol. Um, okay, right. So. Okay, there's our picture of that one. Ooh, it's the circle of life. There he is. Now, that was one of the big guys, wasn't it? And it looks to me like they've got big old round hooves, do you think? Yeah? Like, look at, look at that foot there. That looks to me very much like this thing up here. Yeah, that looks lo not so much like that, a lot more like that, isn't it? Okay. Let's see. Can we use the famous zip mode to actually get ourselves about a little bit here? Mm-hmm. Does that actually help us with where we were? Nah, that actually takes us further back than where we were, right? Okay, hang on. Wait, wait. Getting turned around. So... This way. There we go. Who needs maps, right? That is a path over there, but we've got a totem this way. Yeah, that's one of the big lads that was just being eaten. And I'm going to go ahead and suggest that the totem that's over here is probably going to be of one of those animals, yeah? Uh, I guess, yeah. I mean, he's got a big old hat on, which is kind of like what they look like, right? Yeah, they've got a big old, big old headdress on them, don't they? So that's cool. Let's take a uh, photo of you... And uh, we're going to go and add that to our board. 
<laughs> Feeling more sober. Excellent. Well, hey, you know, it's Monday night after all. Beep! Get out of here. That's, that's my path. Okay, so we've got the other one, which is uh, behind the uh, the portcullis, and we have... Uh, where was the fourth one? Oh, it's over by the ship. Well, we can, we can zip to the ship. Ah, there we go. We're already at the portcullis. And yeah, that kind of looks like a frog, right? We sort of have as much of that one as we can kind of fit into the thing anyway. So, fine. So let's zip over to the ship quick. Where the fifth totem is. That was just a single tone. That was just... I don't know. What is that supposed to be? What kind of animal is that, do you reckon? Okay, let's have a think now then. So, we're going to zip back into the forest. And let's go to... Let's go to the fortress and just have a look at the actual device that we need to um, fiddle around with there. Yep, this way to the swamp. Now, what are the odds, you reckon, that we're going to get into uh, this fortress and we're going to find Akinar just chilling, vibing, being like, little girl turned up? I don't know anything about that. I've just been in my fortress this whole time. Quite possible. Okay. There we go, so, pull that up. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ah, we've got eight different options, so we'd have to try eight different combinations Assuming the rest of this was correct. Now, here's the thing, though. What's the order? Top of the triangle downwards? Probably. So you do, like, the bear claw here and the cloven hoof at the end? Do you reckon? Now, what's really interesting here, yeah, is that this, this picture is not something that has five claws. It's got three, like a sloth. That is Cloven Hoof Guy. That's fine. This looks more like the kind of animal that would have five claws. Ah, 
this page is an interesting one. So we don't have to worry about that. That doesn't feature. It's this one, this one, this one, and this one. But I kind of don't get the connection. Because you've got cloven hoof bird. You've got this is more like a chicken foot onto a fish and that's just a that's just a dab of blood there so oh I've accidentally lost my map we can rub those off then given that I've accidentally pasted over my map. Um, hmm. So, okay, and then there's this one, which sort of looks a bit like a frog, doesn't it? Doesn't really look like any of these, like, is it this one? Ah, uh, do you know what? I don't think I don't think we're going to get it without the um fifth symbol because I don't think we have enough certainty of what the other four symbols are and what order they should be in to be able to say yes eight attempts and we're good it's kind of like the animal puzzle in Riven right and I'm sure it's effectively a direct homage right it's a bit like the animal puzzle in Riven where because you've got 20 possibilities on each digit effectively you kind of need all five, unless you're willing to stay there for a long time thinking about it. So, I think what we need is we really do need... We really do need that fifth totem. Now, Akinar talked about his hunting lodge in his book, right? So, I think we're going to take the long way back round and maybe check out his diary first. Here's the other thing as well, right, to bear in mind. We're not stuck right now. Because if we labour this point too long, we can literally just head back to Tamana. Right, because there is... there is. Oh, hang on. Oh, that's a different animal. That looks a lot like the frog animal, doesn't it? And look, he's got like two toed feet. Now uh, you can't get a different look at him from that angle. Come on, do you want to turn to like face me? That would be handy. Oh, he's eating fish. Oh. Is that... Are we talking about... Okay. On this page here, are we talking about what each of the animals eat? It's 
So this guy eats birds, does he? Can we see that? Back here in the swamp. How's Haven treating us? Haven is not messing around with us, in honesty, but great to see you, Everett Topanga. Um, yeah. Haven is definitely given us a lot to uh, work through. So we are currently working through the animal puzzle. We've got four of the totems. And we're trying to tie up those totems with the animals that they might represent. I'm working on a theory that says that this page that you see in the center of the screen there might be what the animals eat. So I'm trying to see if I can see one of these hoofy boys. See if I can see one of them eating a bird. It would make a lot more sense if they ate insects, though, to be fair, because I don't see a huge number of birds around here. Looks like he's just eating, like, uh, <laughs> you know, leaves off the ground or whatever. Hello. This guy's just always standing here whenever we come back. So, yeah, so we don't obviously see you guys eating... eating birds. So, don't know, really. On the other hand, though... <sighs> that animal that we just saw... Oh, I think I need to push you out of the way, do I? Get out of the way, please. On the other hand, that animal that we just saw eating the fish was like a two-toed animal. Uh, so we saw it over this way. And there he is. To be honest, the way his heel is there... The way his heel is there makes it... Makes me feel more like that he's going to have a footprint like that rather than like that, you know? Because this looks like you've kind of got a heel coming out the back of his foot. Like you're... Like you're sort of stepping like this with your weight over on the over on the ball of the foot. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I'm overthinking that. Maybe this is just supposed to be what they eat. You think the graphic detail here is pretty impressive, however node-based movement in a jungle was really disorienting. Yeah, I reckon that is not an uncommon observation, you know? So the other thing we have to think about then is what is the other two-toed animal? Oh, we're going through there. Oh, this bear trap is made out of cutlery. Do you see that? It's little forks. 
That's amazing. Now that is attention to detail. Okay. Right. Let's zip back to the uh, ship. That's a two-toed animal, isn't it? Hang on, hang on, hang on. When we went up here, we got jump scared by one of those guys. Do you remember? Maybe we're supposed to be looking at his feet. Okay, so what we do, we grab the box, push the box over there. To be fair, if I'd put this much work into keeping the... Mind you, it's going to be cold and damp in here, so... Yeah. Almost certainly, Akinar's Forest Fortress. Just way better. Just way better. Was there anything down there that we couldn't get to first time? Or anything that will make more sense now that we've been in the jungle? Because we haven't been back in here since we've been to the jungle. And there might be some stuff that actually makes a little bit more sense now, given that we've got more context. Okay, well, that's this. Right. Oh, it's a taxidermy thing. Right, so on the arms, they sort of have a thumb and three, but it doesn't it doesn't look like the handprint. But yeah, the feet, the feet. So when we're looking at the... So I reckon that's the claw, yeah. Do you reckon this one... Do we reckon that one's the bird? He's got the eyes pretty far set. And it does sort of look like a beak, doesn't it? So if this one's the bird... Right, I reckon that's the claw. Because, I mean, look at it. It's got teeth and stuff. That's the round hoof. Right, I think we're pretty happy with that one. This guy... Right, and then we got monkey... And then this guy's the one that's eating the fish. Yeah? Should have taken a picture of the fish eater, shouldn't we? But I think that's the guy eating the fish. So... So that's the fish eater. The claw is obvious.
The hand has got to be the monkey. And then we've got round, round hoof there. And then that's the bird? Could be. Okay. Well, let's see. If we climb up, we might be able to get a decent look at one of them again. Oh, yeah, look. Oh, you can't quite see it from this angle. But, um... Yeah, look, it's another bear trap made of forks. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, the attention to detail in these games is really impressive, isn't it? Everett says he really likes the detail here and constraint in tracing building materials back to the items actually available. Hmm. And, you know, thematically, a ship works really well, right? Because, I mean, ships that are designed to be at sea for a long period of time are going to have a lot of stuff that you would need. Like, plenty of building materials, plenty of wood, plenty of nails. Okay. Now... We, we had the guy fly up at some point, didn't we? Because he, he, he jumped in behind us. I don't really remember how that happened. What do I think of the game provided journal narration? I think it kind of puts me out of a job, to be honest. Because, you know, half the appeal of these Let's Plays is, is me just... You know, reading the journal entries. Oh, do you know what? On the other hand... The bird clearly eats fish. Being all, like, aquatic and stuff. So... Maybe I have those two the wrong way around. Yeah, the bird clearly eats fish. Like, that's kind of obvious, isn't it? But um but yeah, no, I thought I thought the journal narration was absolutely fine, you know? Like, it's okay. Revelation has a whole bunch of thought-out details that they never really prompt the player to notice. Yeah, fair. Ah, oh, we've got some good sketches of the animals in here. Mangri, an omnivore. Aha. Camudile, a predator. Okay. That's fine, we already solved that puzzle. Karnak. Bloody scavenger. Also eats fish. Oh! Oh, 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 that's the bird! Oh, you're right, yeah, 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 okay, fine. Nearly ripped my leg off, pulled vanishing act, and just wait till hunting post is finished. Magnificent. Yeah, look at the size of those claws. Right. Hoping he'd be talking about the hunting post a little more and the monkeys. F 
fishing habits against them was sheer genius. Okay. Come on, talk to me about the monkeys, though. Search and search. Where's the linking book? Okay, got my first taste of primate today. I was cutting a path through the jungle when one of the stupid buggers clonked me from behind with a piece of fruit. Scared the hell out of me. I whipped round, ready to slice and dice. But it let out this ear-piercing shriek. Must have been a signal to its buddies, because they all took off into their nests. Too bad Mr. Shrieker wasn't fast enough. An ear-piercing shriek. Okay, so it's somewhat of a clue. So we're trying to create an ear-piercing shriek which will get them to run off back to their nest. Fine. Mostly Karnak figuring out how to use the fission, right? Well, I can't escape. Where is Cirrus? Past few days. Too much. Don't remember killing. Figured it out. Tongue of snake. Cirrus is trapped too. Busy building the machines linked to Spire in search of plunder. Miserable Camadile. Nearly ripped my leg off. Pull the vanishing act. Just wait till the hunting post is finished. More tracks. Rainwash most found them. Definitely tracks. Look fresh. Only smell me coming. Took off. What is this thing? Okay, so it doesn't. Hmm. Yeah, she doesn't give us a direct clue there. Fine. Okay. How do we get those things in the hunting shack? We need an ear-piercing shriek out of them, essentially. Uh, it's down this way, right? Do you know what? I'm also kind of thinking... Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. There's also something we're sort of missing. Because there was some weird... There was a weird plant back here that made the camadile, like, lose consciousness. Ooh. Right, 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 okay. Is it still over here, do you reckon? Oh no, it's it's real dead is what it is, okay. Okay, no, nothing really to see there. Right, back to here. This journal seems to imply Akinar hadn't known Cirrus was trapped, which clashes with what he told us through the blue book. Uh, well, he surmises that Cirrus must be trapped too. But on the other hand, ah, oh, do you know what? It's been so long since I've played Mist. I can't really remember. Who tore out the pages from the uh, blue and red linking books? Because Cirrus and Akinar can't have torn each other's pages out. And, uh... 
And Atrus was already trapped by that point, wasn't he? But yeah, that's just my memory failing me. To be fair, I don't I don't remember how the uh, how the events of Misk precipitated. To be honest, well, this is the highest pitched one. time oh has that uh, you're not sure who would have taken the pages out is, is that not something that has a canonical explanation duration a thing? Nah. Hmm. Not sure on this one. I feel like we must have missed a hint somewhere. Because... Yeah. It must be some kind of code, right? So I figure we must have missed a hint. How do we feel now that we have a... Uh... Missed one's unclear on whether Atrus trapped his brothers first or vice versa, but you're inclined to think that Atrus was trapped last in part because of the distribution of the red and blue pages. Okay. Moment to think, a moment to think. I'm wondering whether it's... I'm wondering whether it's hint a clock on that totem, or whether we have now enough context on these ones, on these guys, whether we could try and go for it. it, it this is the other way around, right? Because that's like the frog fish thing, and that's the bird. Yeah. That's your fish eater, that's the round hoof, there's your bird, there's the claw. Do we have enough confidence on the other four items now that we could try and work out the fifth one? I think maybe we do. Let's try it out. Because, you know... Worst case scenario, we do eight attempts, and it doesn't work. 
because, uh, you know, we're wrong. But best case scenario, it takes on average four attempts and we get to continue being totally hint free. Uh, hang on, wait, is the swamp up here? Yes, yes it is. You have faith in me that I won't need a hint. That is very charitable. I have yet to beat one of these games without needing a hint yet. And I tell you what, sometimes we're having to look at hints incredibly early on. <laughs> oh man, so we're playing one shot at the moment on the, uh, on the YouTube. And, uh, oh man, I took a hint on... Um, Oh, I think I took a hint literally in episode one, so I just got so stuck well early. Tell you what, though, right, well, that, I'll give you a little sneak peek into the future. So one of the things that I've been recording recently is Haven Moon. And if doing a bit of geometry as part of the puzzle solving is the kind of thing that appeals to you, keep an eye out for Haven Moon because there are some puzzles in there that rely on you like working out the distance and the bearing of certain islands and things and it's like it's pretty out there as far as puzzle game uh, it's pretty out there as far as puzzle game puzzles go but uh, really enjoying it This is an intentional puzzle, not an interface problem. Okay, well that's good to know. So it's not a pixel hunt or anything like that. It is an intentional puzzle with three things. Let's assume that we're going to do bear claw from the top. Yeah, in which case bear claw just looks like, oop, no, is that one. Have I played the Schism series? I have not. I have not. In fact, I've not even heard of them, so yeah. Give us the, uh, give us the rundown. So the next one I think is the Frogfish which is this one here. So that's that symbol, yes? Yes. So that's that symbol. The monkey's the one in the middle. The fourth symbol... Okay, the last symbol is the, is the round hoof. Who's that one? And the fourth symbol is the bird, which is like the hourglass. The hourglass is there. Okay. Okay. So then, what do we reckon this symbol is? Probably not a repeat of one of the others. So let's try something like... I'm gonna try... Uh, no, 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 I'm feeling pretty good about that one. Go! No. Oh, hey, well, at least retries are actually going to be pretty quick, come to think of it. No? Okay. Come on, it's got to be one of these, right? So that's the only other symbol that's not already been tried. <gasps> Totally counts. Totally counts. Yep, 
You just started it yesterday. What, Haven Moon? Really? That's a coincidence. The games are Polish. Oh, or you just started Schism yesterday. The games are Polish, but done in English, so it makes sense for a weird dynamic. The story is almost comically bad, but there's some really good maths puzzles and a strong mist influence. Do you know what? I think there is... I don't know. Maybe it would be a bit of an... I don't want to call it an accessibility problem, because accessibility kind of means a different thing, right? Because accessibility in video games are usually talking about people who have, like, a, a, like a physical impairment that prevents them doing, like, quick time events and things like that, or reading text on the screen and such. But what I mean is, like, you know, let, let's call it, like, a puzzle skill flaw, right? Because, like, if you've got puzzles like this in Haven Moon, where you need to work out the angle, like, th th this puzzle is all to do with, like, angling a telescope to be able to fire a laser beam. So you need a bearing and you need an angle. And so you're trying to work out, like, what angle you need to have this beam to have it go a certain distance and so on, right? So it's, it's not hard maths. It's, like, the kind of maths you would do when you're, like, 16 years old. But, like, there would definitely be a skill flaw to that kind of puzzle. You wouldn't... You require real-world knowledge to be able to solve it. You can't just do it purely as a logical consequence of what you learn in the game itself. Um, now, I kind of don't mind that too much. Like, I think it definitely gives it a bit of uh, novelty, like a bit of variety. But um, I could certainly see that not being a very popular way to make puzzles. Uh, you remember Schism, you can recommend the first one for the experience. The sequels aren't connected to the story they were telling, like Mist 1 to 4 and 5. Cool. Okay, we are locked in. So we can go this way, but let's... Let's... N uh, 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 excuse me, knock? What the heck? I was half expecting it to play the, um, you know, the theme. It's quite a nice shirt. they are in that uh, in that context oh oh of course this is to get the narration on the journal okay strap in everyone not sure i can do this pan feels awkward keeps slipping been so long since i used one but what else is there what else to do Went back to wreck today. First time since moving into house. Found his bones exactly how I left them. Except clean now. Bleached white by the sea. How many times have I replayed it since then? Sun sinking into the waves. Tip of my spear. Gleaming wet with the poison. <laughs> See myself crouching low near the rock, so sure he will come because of his mate. Sometimes in my head, it happens different. Poison gets diluted, or one of her ropes snaps and breaks. He rears back, spear misses. So he used poison. Now they both get away. Mm. And we all get one more day worth living for. Reset traps today. Swamp water corroded one of them. Forced to go to depot to fix. 
Coming back, saw a Commodile take down a Zeft tier. Moved with such precision, not a single gesture wasted. Zeft tier probably didn't feel a thing. Probably not. <laughs> it's not what I expected. As in, I think Agnar's probably it. wrong. It's calmer, not as windy. But rain still beats down like in the wreck. And it's hot. Still hot. Yeah, we don't have to deal with that ocean spray, though. Only real difference is the screams. A lot closer now. On all sides. Starting to get on my nerves. Can't sleep. Too many screams. And when I close my eyes, the things I see, the faces. My God, Cirrus. Did we really kill so many? Added it up, best I could. Eight years, three since I killed the last Serpati. Keep thinking I should do something for him. Place some kind of tribute next to the bones. Totem pole, maybe. God knows. Carving it would keep me busy for a while. Maybe I can make one for each of them. What's the use? Hmm. What's the use? Can't go on like this. Can't think. Have to do something. Keep my mind off the dreams. Maybe, maybe go south for a few days. Sleep outside. My Godfather. Did it have to be the same? Two weeks working my way through the south jungle and for what? More of the same, more of the same, empty nothingness. Can't take it anymore. Can't live like this. Karnax got in while I was away. Forgot how agile they are. Braver, too, when they're hunting in groups. Been breeding like mad ever since I killed their primary predator. Oh no. Should probably do something about that. Well, you'll have to become their but primary predator, clearly. Bridge, create some kind of lock to keep them out. Went back to the south jungle today, hoping I'd missed something. Saw a group of mangries playing under their nests. Thought about replenishing supplies, but couldn't do it. They just looked too peaceful. Eventually turned to go and spied one of them watching me. Their lookout, I suppose. Wonder how long he knew I was there. Ink supply getting low. Oh no. Watering it down, but might try to make more. The way the channel would tree dwellers once taught me. Found some petals in the south jungle that might work for the ink. Picked a few to take back as an experiment. While picking them, I noticed something odd about the mangrees. In the north, they all scatter as soon as they spot me, but the south tribe only looks curious. Must be because I never hunted them. New ink seems okay. Bit faint. I prefer a better color, though. I'll head back to the south jungle in the morning, see if I can find different varieties. I don't believe it. Went back to gather more petals and found a bunch of them already picked. They were lying in a pile where I'd been working. Mangrees must have done it. Imitating me? Spent most of the morning in the watchtower trying to observe from a distance. Find out how they act when I'm not there. Couldn't see much though. Trees are too thick. Would like to get closer somehow. I suppose I could build another post, but it'd have to be different this time. Not a lot left I can take from the wreck. Kinda like the idea of going all natural. Oh, so there might How be a the second heck hunting did post. Vedros people do it. Been weaving support branches all day, and my arms and chest muscles are killing me. Mangri sure got a kick out of watching, though. One of them even stopped playing long enough to come over and give me advice. At least that's how it seemed. 
wouldn't stop chirruping at me. Made me want to rig up another sound system, see if I can try and talk back. Oh my god. It can't be. It can't. This evening, I was sketching in the post, trying to get their expressions right. Mangries were playing that game they liked to play, fruit tossing. Ball must have rolled under the post. All of a sudden, I heard this cry I'd never heard before. Sequence of drawn out highs and lows. Looked up and found all of them looking at me, pointing at the ball and making that sound. Like they were calling a name. Oh. My name. They've given me a name. What am I supposed to do with this, Father? What am I supposed to do? And that is the end. Okay. Okay, so Akinar, clearly not here, but here's his writing desk. Yeah, okay, we can open the chest. What do we got in the chest? A whole lot of nothing? Weird. Why would there be a chest with nothing in it? And this chest. Ah, okay, 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 okay. We can open this chest as well. No. Oh, uh huh. What this then? Okay. Is that related to his name? There's a big pot, a medium pot, and a small pot, and two squares which are filled out. Taking a picture for now. Okay, let's continue exploring out this way. So this is uh, south of the main forest now. Oh, hello. Okay, and what do you want? Well, hang on, if I go down there, is he just gonna eat me? Like, going down there doesn't seem like a good idea, does it? Well, ah. the thing is, right, 90, 99% of the time, you know that in Mist, there's no enemies, there's no fail state, you can't actually be hurt. But then randomly, the game will occasionally just throw a, um, a bad ending at you. Right? It's not really clear, but that path does look like it comes round, right? So if I go down there, he could definitely attack me.
Okay, I'm saving it first. I'm saving it, right? Like, come on. Bad ending incoming. You don't think you can die in this game. That's what everyone says about the last two games, but you definitely could there. <laughs> Okay, good, right, so we've saved it, we've saved it, so that's fine. Incidentally, Chemtotic, welcome to the chat, first time chatter. Great to see you. Okay, here we go, come on then. Oh! It's a different path. It's a different path, look at that. Well, that- that does not look like a different path at all, does it? <laughs> Incidentally, Chemtotix, thank you very much for the follow. Uh, yeah, we play all sorts of puzzle games on this channel. We are working our way through the entire Mist Back catalogue. Uh, we are up to Mist 4, but you can see all of our previous games over on the YouTube channel. Huh. Right. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay. That's great. That's great. So. Whoops. Hang on. I accidentally overwrote one of my other things. Right. So we've got a thing here. It is an another one of those moments where parallax would have been really helpful. Totally agree. Oh, we've got another memory. Come on, come on. I get at least close to their tunnel range. I'm never going to be understood. Hmm. Right. Let's grab a, uh, a screenshot of that one as well. And yes, so incidentally, there is the YouTube. If anyone wants to check out the previous episodes, we've done Mist, we've done Riven, we've done Mist 3. We're on Mist 4 now. We'll do Uru next, of course. And, uh, and we also play a load of other puzzle games as well, including things like Quern and Abduction and so forth. Okay. So we've got our name... Uh, now, I'm going to assume that we go top to bottom in terms of the order, yeah? So, first of all, let's give them a little bit of the old... Hello! Yes, that's me. Um, this one... So, looking at the one in the middle of him throwing the fruit... We've got a larger bar and then two small bars. So do you reckon that's more like... Heh. <laughs> Might be. Throw the fruit! Hmm. Do I need to be, like, looking at the one that I'm looking at? did anything that time. Thankfully, Akinar makes his ladders obvious. Yeah, that's true. 
<laughs> Looking at you. Atrus has a lot to answer for. Atrus interior design, right? Like Tamana, love it. Love it. But on the other hand, Atrus, he's he's just an ocean nightmare from start to finish. He really is, right? I mean, we have regulations for a reason, right? Okay. Oh no, wait, wrong way. Oh, hang on. Well, that's what I did last time, and he's not opening up again. They all have different names, do you reckon? So he's 3 2. This one's been left open. Let's have a look. Is there anything else to look at here? <laughs> Summoning these mangroves is awful. They have selective hearing. <laughs> Is it a question of needing to leave them for long enough? No. Oh, okay, we've got that one going. So that was 3, 2, 1, but it might have just been 2, 1. So if I go 2, 1 again... No. If I ask for 3, 2 again, does he wake up? Hmm. 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 Akinar's actor spoke at 2022 Mysterium. Ah, uh, see, that would be one of the really nice things about living in the U.S. I think it would be that, uh, assuming the Mysterium was in the U.S., of course. Um, because so much of that kind of culture, so much media that we consume internationally is American oriented. But it means that if you actually want to go to these conventions or meet these creators or so on, like if you were in America, you, you have a lot more opportunity to do so. In, in the UK, you know, you might get a, I mean, well, pfft. there's Comic-Con in London, right? But realistically, oh, who wants to go to Comic-Con nowadays? This is this is one of those situations where, oh man, I might actually pick up heat for saying this, but yeah. So, events like comic book conventions, because and a lot of this is to do with the Marvel movies, obviously. But, like, because the Marvel movies have become so ubiquitously popular, and Marvel has become ubiquitously popular, superheroes, comic books, etc. Um, but also a lot of the ancillary stuff that goes around it, like Dungeons and Dragons and things like that. It makes going to those kind of conventions a lot, lot worse than it used to be. Because in the 90s, those kind of conventions were cheaper, easier to get around in, and just a lot more chill as a vibe. Now, I don't know if this is something that affects like other places as well, but certainly because in the UK we really only get those kind of conventions like once a year and they're always London-based, it does kind of feel like... Maybe all of the energy is very concentrated into, like, a single event. But it does feel like those uh, London events are a lot... I mean, it might also be just because I'm getting older as well. But it does feel like those kind of London events are a lot more... ...energetic than they used to be. That sounds incredibly gatekeepy, of course. 
because, you know, it's like, Ah oh, yeah, back in my day, the fandom was really small and everyone knew each other's names. <laughs> I'm not sure I've missed anything over here. But yeah, but it does seem like one of the uh, one of the nice things about living stateside would be that you would have the opportunity to go to this sort of event more frequently. Like there would be more of them. Um, but then again, obviously America's so large, you probably have to catch a flight to them anyway. You gonna open? No. What if we do it in reverse order? Will that prompt him to run back the other way? Hmm. You've never been to a Mysterium, but you've watched many of the presentations through either live streams or on the YouTube archives. Some are duds, but others are quite interesting. Fair enough. No, well you're not supposed to be listening at all, lad. Okay, let's try top to bottom. This year Mysterium will be in Canada, which you think is the first time it's outside of the US. Well, I mean, you know, Canada, Canada celebrations in the chat, right? <laughs> Okay, let's try... I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, but there ain't that many three-tone combinations that there can possibly be, you know what I mean? Brute force learning a language. Yeah, well, very slowly. Like, what even is this? Well, we've just been through all six three-digit combinations there, and no one moved on anything. There are long and short turns. Yes! Well, how long is long, I guess? But no, you're right, we did, we did already surmise that actually the fruit throwing was probably long, short, short. So... Uh -huh. So that's the same guy that ran from here to here. And that was 2-1. So actually, let's write that one down, because that's the same guy. So... So 2-1 is one. So this guy then... So is he 3-2? Wow, okay, that was a really short... Right. So he's 3-2. Fine. Okay. Well, let's try and learn the names of the other ones then. So... Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to assume they're two digits apiece, but they... No. Whoops, missed him. No. Maybe they're to be found elsewhere. They might be. I mean, we could go back to Akinar's uh, flat and see if we have others. Because he talks into his diary about them. The other one to consider is... These spiky bits are sort of the direction of the hides, I guess. But... Hmm, not sure, not sure. go, he's back over here. Oh, is that really a flat? Um, hmm. Yeah, do you know what? I, I think you're right. I think you're right, yeah. Because if it's a standalone village... If it's a standalone village, uh, sorry, standalone village. If it's a standalone house, you'd usually call it like a maisonette. If it's if it's flat sized, so a house, a house usually has two stories. If it's only a single story, you'd usually call it a bungalow. And if it's two stories but you only live on one story of it it would be a maisonette and a flat would be like a one story apartment inside a larger building yeah so you're quite right do i have the name of the white beard mangry in my notes i don't think I do. Hang on a minute. Oh, this is his name. I thought this was my name. Unless that's not in with the white beard. Unless that's a different one. But I think that's the only note I've got. Oh, I don't have it yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Oh, hang on, wait. What's this? <gasps> There's a second floor! It is a house! Up! Come on. There we go. Nope. Here we go. Nice. <laughs> Upgrade from bungalow to house. Confirmed. What are we looking for here? It is kind of a nice place, isn't it? Are we looking for something specific here? Okay, we'll go hunt around in a mo. What else have we got up here?
I mean, to be fair, if you're going to be stranded alone for eight years, like, oof, kind of got to make the best of it, right? You would much rather be in prison than Haven than Spire. Well, wouldn't know, to be honest. We've not been to Spire yet. Okay. <laughs> so that's one of the names that we don't have yet. Mixing up eggs like the tree dwellers in Channel would taught us. Remember that? Remember? So, is the is the moral of this story going to be that uh, you know Akinar, through eight years of solitary confinement, being forced to survive in the jungle, manages to reform? Because. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not sure how I feel about that as a as a moral to this story. <laughs> what is this here? That really looks like something. Maybe it's just a piece of wood. Okay, can we see anything? Akinar is the better of the two brothers in this one. Well, I mean, you know. Uh, I mean, mists certainly seem to heavily imply that whilst Cirrus was just a terrible person, Akinar was the one who was actually like genuinely a bit unhinged but on the other hand they're both terrible people like yeah it's a pretty low bar it is a pretty low oh oh we can zoom in and out are we are we looking for something I don't know, you know. Okay, I think we're okay for now. It feels like we should be able to do something with this painting, doesn't it? Like there's no there's not even any memory associated with this painting. I mean, Yisha's been painting back on Tamana. Hmm. Oh, hang on. There's something there. There we go. Man, you got to get it right on the corner. Okay. Come on. They should have had some births by now. Why aren't they reproducing? Oh, God. What if I 
kill too many females. Oh, there we go. He's decided to become an ecologist. One, three, and seven. Hmm, okay. We'll now have a picture of it. So... Okay, so we know th the names of three of the monkeys? I think, hang on. Yeah... Yeah, we know the names of three of the monkeys so far. Okay, you clarified earlier when we weren't up against an accidental obstacle caused by bad influence interface. Would it count as a clue to point such a problem out? Is it related to this painting? Because <laughs> this painting is like super sus. It might be. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go on. Uh what's what's up with this painting? Feel free to uh feel free to let me know because there's something weird about it. Unless you're supposed to be comparing the painting with, like, what the telescope shows. But, uh... You can only interact with it when you're not zoomed in on it. Ah! Oh, that's gross, that is. Oh, yeah, nah, that's dumb. <laughs> um, we already know the name of this guy, though. So that doesn't actually help us, because we already knew 3-2. Uh, so we still only know the names of three of them. But, uh, but yeah, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> oh! We've got a memory this time, though. We didn't get a memory for this one. Okay. It's Revelation's greatest shame. Oof. Oof. <laughs> To be fair, if that's the worst part of the whole game, it's, uh, you, you're doing all right. <laughs> okay, there's got to be more paper around here then. There's got to be something in this in this chest, right? Because like, why would there be a chest which is just empty? Oh, oh, hang on.
Hmm. Oh, hang on. Oh no, 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 no. That's just that's just closing the lid again. There's only one more monkey, I think. I think there are four monkeys, right? Because there's five hides, but there's four monkeys in them. We could certainly go and try and work out what the last monkey's name is. Like, they've all been two, two character names so far. But, uh... That would not be ideal. You might be underestimating my ability to brute force a solution when needed. Every other page has been in here. The only sus... The only sus thing is... Is this thing again, actually. Like... Is there a page under this page? Did I check the desk closely? Yeah, okay. That's maybe a little bit specific as a hint, but we'll uh, we'll go and have a look at the desk. though aha there we go there we go so that is all four of them Imagine if we found Yisha hiding under the desk. Well, indeed. <laughs> Why do they hide stuff like that? It's not even a puzzle, just a completely hidden interactable. Um, I mean, I suppose it's the it's it's the interplay, isn't it? Because uh, I mean, Mist has always had a degree of hidden object puzzling, I guess. Has it? Has it? Mm, if I'm thinking back to the first Mist, does the first Mist use any uh, hidden objects as part of its puzzles? Not sure. Okay, well I know their names, so now the question is, what am I actually trying to do here? 
I guess I'm trying to get this guy to run through the poisonous plants, right? So. Uh, uh, uh. The secret crawl space is in the mechanical age. There is, that's true. Click and drag was the new cool thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think I think in the original mist, yeah, there wasn't there wasn't really too much hidden object stuff. Yeah. Riven had a bit. Riven had uh Yeah, you definitely had to like be looking at some desks pretty closely in Riven, for sure. Okay, what do we want? We want this guy... I think we want... Um, three, two to move. Right, so he's going to move there, which is going to move him here. Now I think what we want... White guy, white beardy guy ended up in here, didn't he? Oh no, he ended up over there. No, 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 no. You, you, you just chill, mate. You just chill. Let's try a uh, two-one then. Does that count? Is he done? Wait a minute, hang on. So if I now get 2-1 to move again... Ah, no, he manages, he comes out. He manages to come out. The only thing they hid back in the day was Easter eggs. So the same guy can't move twice. But I think what we want is we want to get him to run across it and then run back. Do we reckon that's the plan? Wait, but if the first guy won't go twice, if you can't do the same guy twice, what's going to happen here then? Because now they're all stuck because this... Oh no, wait. Oh no, 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 no. There's one between these two. So let's move um, 3 2 over. Okay, so he's going to go and run that way. And then I think what we want to do is we need to. Hmm, okay, right. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Oh, we also need to throw the fruit as well, don't we? Obvi. So is the fruit all in this one? Is that what the is that what the dots all imply? Because I was thinking, oh yeah, do do we need to get the guy to run from one to the other? But I don't think you'd be able to, would you? Because if the gap is in here, such that the monkey can run from here to here to cause him to run across, then the gap's going to be here. So you're not going to be able to make him run back because the gap would need to be here to get that to work. So it can't be that. Are the dots the fruit? In which case, can we get him to come over to here? So let's move... Well, it's the one that we've not... Uh, it's the one that we've not spoken to yet, isn't it? It's 1-3. Uh,
Okay. And then, um, 3 2. Oh no. Haha. <laughs> The animals start to feel like pieces of a machine rather than actual ran uh, rather than actual living creatures. Yeah, I can see that. Let's try one three. Oh no. Wrong one. Wrong one. So it's not one three. Okay, it must be two one. There we go. So now you're gonna run this way. And now you've got all the fruit, right? Okay. So if you've got all the fruit... What happens if we then call... Huh. Why, though? Why? Okay. Okay, can we move this one over? I don't I don't know where they are where they're all standing now. So we kinda want this one to come over now, don't we? So he would be uh... one three. Yeah, okay. So he's going to come over. Oh, do you know what? We get him into the pit and then we throw fruit at him. That's going to be it. So we need to get this guy to move here. So white beardy guy is in here. So this guy must be... 2-3. Excuse me, 2-3. Oh no, sorry, sorry, 3-2. There we go. So now he's into the thing, so now what we need is... Go on! Throw the fruit at him! Ah, oh, you suck! What? Has he got to be on the right side? Is he literally going to be on the right side for it? So we need to move the beardy guy now because he's in the wrong spot. Okay, so Beardo has moved. Ah, uh, maybe we just want to reset this puzzle. That might actually be quicker. Okay, so we're moving back over here. Yeah, cool, great. Up we go. Oh wait, hang on, that hasn't reset the puzzle at all. Has it? No, it's not. Okay, I think we've got to wander back to... Uh, maybe we've got to wander back to the house. Because the puzzle did reset when we went to the house and then came back. <laughs> Do you know 
just thinking back to that point earlier on in the stream where you confidently said, I don't think you can die in this game. It's like, yeah. So apparently I'm one of the very few people, well, according to my YouTube comment section, I'm the only person some people have ever seen to get one of the bad endings to Riven the first time we played. So, yeah. I met we our, our canonical ending was the one where Gen just shoots us because we called him in too many times to show us the trap book. Not our finest puzzle solving moment, has to be said. Well, I mean, it also took us around about, uh, I think, I think we, I think we were like three attempts deep, um, before we got to, uh, the supposed canonical ending in Mist 3 as well. Okay. So, let's graph this out. Boop, 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 boop. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to rotate around that way, because that's the way we're looking at it. Okay. Someone tell him to save before that happens. Yeah, 100%. So, we're starting here, 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 and here. And angry guy is there. So we can move. So what we need is we need a person in here. And we need to get someone here. So we need this guy to move to here. Then this guy to move to here. Right, we can do it in three moves. Yeah, this guy to here. This guy to here. Throw a fruit, please. And I think that's all we need. So, what's the names of the people we're calling? It's going to be, first of all, 2-1, um, I think. Uh, or it might be 3-2. No, 3 twos our first one. Yep, okay, good. Uh, then it's going to be... Two, one. Good. Now, throw a fruit. Ah, I felt for sure, like... If he's from that direction, that's the one. Okay. So we could move this guy over. So looking more at here, we've got all the blotches on here, because that's got lots of fruit. This one has one piece of fruit, maybe, because it's got one blotch right there. So maybe we can move this one to here, and then throw the fruit again. So he would be... So we've done 3-2. Uh, 3-1. Is the last guy, yeah. No. What? Why can't you run? Oh, because that's that's full. That's full, right. So we need to move Beardo. Ah, yeah, okay. 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now that we've brute forced the monkey totem, perfectly, perfectly happy to go back and uh, and find out what the actual solution for that. Although, I would say brute forced? I don't know. Like, we, 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 we found out the last digit in a five digit combination. Like, that's, that's solving like 95% of the puzzle there. Yeah, Savidro did clock us with the hammer a couple of times as well. I, th I think we got I think we got the ending we wanted on the third go. To be fair, second time that was just me not paying attention. Although I still maintain that that was Savidro screwing himself over more than uh, anything else. Okay, so let's move, um, like that's the only legal move we can do anyway, and then from here this is uh, one three, no it's not. Oh, hang on a minute. I've got an auto mod notification. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. I think. I assume you mean Niger like animal as in the country, Niger. Yeah, auto mod does occasionally hallucinate, that's true. Oh, you meant tiger. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, no, tigers are not native to Niger at all. <laughs> Niger's in Africa. Okay, right, so 1-3 was no good, so, uh, oh, it's probably like 2-3. Uh, no, sorry, 3-2, what am I doing? I'm reading it left to right rather than top to bottom. Right, so 3-2 moves. Now we can ask 3-1 to move. No, hang on. No, 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 no. We want 3-2 to move. No, you were already 3-2. Hang on. Who's currently in that one? Is it 1-2? No, 2-1, two, 2-1. One, two, one. I'm reading it the wrong way again. Okay, so if we now go from here to here, and then throw the fruit, are we now gonna be able to do it? So this guy is one three. Okay, and now, fruit throw. Oh, no, come on. Here. Anyone? No, no one has any fruit. Your brain has started drawing parallels between Savidro and 
Ariag from the third book in the Hitchhiker trilogy. Now part of me wants to see that poor guy played all voiced by Brad Dourif. Yeah. Uh, so, one of the things that I was uh, sort of putting together in my spare time was a bit of a comparison video of Denis Villeneuve's Dune with the 1984 Dune and the sci-fi TV miniseries. And do you know what? As far as best Peter DeVries goes, Brad DeRiff, 100%, 100%. Like, uh, yeah, he's he's definitely he's definitely carrying the uh, the 1984 torch for sure. Hmm. Do you know what? This is a bit of a tricky puzzle, not because of, like, moving the monkeys around, but because it's a little bit unclear what we're even trying to do, to be honest. Because, like, okay, we've got this set up. We've got a pit right here, and we can force the tiger across the pit. In either direction. But then, like, throwing the fruit does, like, nothing. <sighs> Maybe the different monkeys have different fruit throwing skills? Maybe we need to get a particular monkey into the fruit throwing hot seat. That would seem wildly arbitrary, but if it was the case, the obvious candidate would be Beardy Monkey. Because he's the oldest and wisest of all monkeys. And he's the most easily identifiable. That would seem like a weird solution to the puzzle, though. That would seem weird to me. Is he the biggest? I don't know, maybe. I mean it's 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 the best it's the best suggestion I've got is that the weak ass monkey that we've been putting in there so far can't throw the can't throw the fruit far enough. So okay. All right, let's reset the puzzle. Uh, so that everyone's back at their starting locations. And let's see if we can do it with the white monkey. I don't know if you actually need to go all the way into the house, but um, certainly going into the house definitely does the reset, so that's fine. Okay. Right. So, the white monkey starts here, and uh, our first opening is here. So we could move here, 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 and then move again around, which leaves this one open, then you move this one across and throw the fruit. 
Give that a go. Wait, I need the names. I need the names visible. So, let's start with... White Monkey. No, because he's currently got the guy underneath him. So no, that doesn't work. So what do we need to do? Well, we could rotate everyone around this way, couldn't we? So then white's going to end up here, then he ends up here, then he ends up here. Uh, leaving that open, and then we go that way. So we rotate the other way around instead. Okay. Have I ever mentioned on this stream that Soccer Ban is not exactly my favourite genre of games? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, don't know. Don't know why. Um, tried playing Baba Is You. Brilliant game. Fully appreciate it. But, um, yeah. Just not, just not the one. Uh, do you know what? It actually doesn't matter which of these two moves. In fact, if this one moves, we'll just get the gap uh, going a little bit sooner. So... Uh, what is it? 3-2? Okay, so three, two moves. Then let's do a uh, one, three. Oh no, that's the wrong one. Shoot. Doesn't matter, because now we can do uh, three, two again. And we'll just move... Uh... Right, okay. No, not going to work whilst uh, he's doing his little animation there. <laughs> Okay, so now the white one can go. Okay, so we've done three, two... Right, so now it's a one, two. No, two, one, sorry. Okay, then... Was this one three two in here? No, wrong one. There must be two one in there. No, it's three one. No, one three, one three. Right. Do you know what I'm going to start doing? Yeah, what we need. Right, so one three. Let's just, let's just move these here. So one three's now in there. Beardy is in there. And these two are like one of them's in there, one of them's in there. Okay. So what I need now is I need one, one, two. No, two, one. No, wrong one. Two, one is up there. I'll show you what I'm doing over here. Right. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start moving these around. So two, one's up here. So he's in here currently. So it's three, two is the next one to move. Okay, now we can move the white one. Okay, now we need three, two again, and then we're gonna throw. 
So let's get our throwing ready, right? So, 3 2 is going to move. Okay. And now we need 3 1. No, 1 3. Okay, and now throw the fruit. Come on. Yeah, we did it. Oh my word. <sighs> yeah, I mean, hype's in the chat. <laughs> I mean, the triumphant music is great. Not my favourite puzzle, I have to say. <laughs> Hello, monkeys! Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Oh, Kemtotic just gifted a sub! Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. So, We Live Amongst Them has received the gifted sub. Thank you very much, Kemtotic. Not many people's favourite puzzle. <laughs> no. I tell you what, though. This music... Damn. Pretty legit. Do you know what? I should I should download the soundtrack actually. Like um, in general, I have found Revelation to have an even better soundtrack than Exile. Exile I found was a little bit too too epic. Oh wow! Oh, this is the O Natural house that he lived in. The puzzle is creative and ambitious, but it gets somewhat lost in its own mechanic. We have a compass. Take a picture of it, just in case. Wear this with love, my son. It's a gift, Akinar. I made it for you. Oh. Don't you like it? No. No. I mean, yes. 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 I like it. It's just... It's so soft. Almost forgot what soft feels like. Oh. You need to find some moss, mate. Stroke some moss. That feels nice and soft. What do we got here? <laughs> so, uh, stroke it four times. Bop it on the nose. Whatever you do, don't stroke it three times. Deadly poison. Okay, we can go this way. There are children watching. Quite right. This is an all ages stream, so I do I do ask everyone to keep it clean. Not so much because it's all ages. It's just that, you know, as as a Brit, uh I don't know. Swearing just seems No. I just I just don't do it. I just don't do it. It's not even something that I stopped doing particularly because I like had 
kids or whatever. It was just like, just one of those things that I've never really done. That, if, if anything looks like a catapult to me, that looks like a catapult to me. Like, look at this. <laughs> yeah, okay. Go on then. Ooh. <laughs> Boot the snoot. So what do you gotta do? You gotta like Wait, what? We don't we don't get the interaction hand. One. Right, okay. See, so you're doing it in that direction, and it's kind of gonna kind of magically open up, is it? Okay. One, two, three, four. Hey! Boop! This is where we enter Akinar's Tree Kingdom. Oh my word, we actually are. Turns out we were just round the corner from Tamana all along. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're back here. Uh, yeah, well, okay. No Yisha, but no Akinar either. Right? I mean, yeah, that very much kind of feels like a congratulations, you've reached the end of the age, right? So I'm assuming there's nothing, there's going to not be anything else in here. Oh, but before we leave. Yes, Spiper. Oh, okay, okay. Spiper, uh,. Spiper redeems, what do I see for 500 points? Well, what have we got? So, we've got a crab, we've got a bamboo thing, we've got a giant, uh, that looks like a sort of giant flute. What are we looking at? So, okay, obviously we've got the ship in the distance. We've got the crab over here. Uh, that path just leads up to where we were. Boop. What's that thing there? Oh! Cyrus has been here! And he and Akinar fought, did they? Interesting. Now hang on. Was that there the whole time? It might have been, to be fair. I mean, that doesn't really have any spoilers to it, to be honest. Okay. Now, how do we open this again? Bonk! 
We are on our way back to Tamana. Hmm, <laughs> fair. So where does the linking book take us? Directly back into the, uh... Yeah, okay, direct... Oh, hang on! There's someone here! And they literally just linked away. Well, hang on, wait. That's behind Yisha's bookcase, isn't it? That looked very much like Akinar, didn't it? Okay, so where's Cirrus then? Hmm. Well, that's going to be one to consider. However, my friends, that is going to be all we have time for this evening. It's getting pretty late over here, so we are going to wrap up the stream just there. What did you think of the new day? Doing this on a Monday rather than a Sunday. Something to think about anyway, because, you know, Something I've been toying with is maybe we could do this on Sunday and Monday. I don't know. But yeah, let me know what you think about that in the comments. Um, if you're watching on YouTube in the future, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of your week. Bye for now. Um, for those of you on Twitter,